Well, hello there. It's Monday, and you know what that means. It's time for Tub Talk Live. Hello, everyone. Richard Tubb here at home in the studio garage in Newcastle upon Tyne in the northeast of England. This is the live show where I talk to the smartest, most successful people in the IT managed service provider industry to give you the opportunity to learn from them with the tips, techniques, tools, and practices that can help you to grow your IT business. Now, as always, we are very interactive on this show. So if you're joining us via LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or anywhere else, let us know in the chat, in the comments, where in the world you are joining us from today so we can give you a shout out. And if you have any questions at all as we go through today's event, please just put them in the comments. We're monitoring all of those channels and uh, we will pause regularly to ask questions of our guests and to give you a name check as well. So without further ado, on to our main event for today, and I am very excited to be joined by not one, but two awesome guests today, Claire Jenks and Pascal Fintoni. Now, Claire, or Jenks, as she is very well known in the managed service provider industry, is well known for helping tech businesses, consultants, and memberships reach their potential and make the biggest impact through design content and business management. More on that shortly. Pascal Fintoni is a digital marketeer, a video marketing expert, speaker, trainer, and webinar host who helps businesses build their online reputation. I'm thrilled to have them join today. Jenks, Pascal, welcome to Tub Talk Live. Much, Rod, uh, Richard, for having us. And can I say after listening to Tub Talk for many, many years, it's a pleasure to be finally on the other side of the lens. Um, I, so I should say for the benefit of everyone, and Jenks will come to you next, Pascal, you almost called me Roger there, didn't you? And there's a reason why that is, because you host a wildly successful show, Two Geeks and a Marketing Podcast as well with uh, Roger Edwards. We do. And we mentioned you uh, often in that show, you know, making reference to your own content efforts. Claire is also included in terms of her systems, as well as that amazing ability to capture your brand and deliver, you know, great results for their clients. Well, I'm so thrilled you're here today. And Jenks, where are you joining us from today? I'm in the beautiful, sunny, cold, freezing cold, uh, Northumberland. Yeah, <laughs> just a little bit around the corner from you. So yeah, it's, uh, we've survived the storm. So yeah, it's a nice place to be. Not, not had any yeah. beach walks today, though, unfortunately. <laughs> and we should say for the benefit of the audience, like we're all friends here. All three of us work together in uh, Team Tub as well as you're running your own businesses. Jenks, people, some people who don't know us very well might be joining today and say, that's a bit impersonal, Richard barking out um, uh, Claire's surname at her. Do you want to explain why uh, most of the industry calls you Jenks? Because that's not even your name anymore, is it? I was going to say, it's not not even my name anymore. But yeah, he's not, be, he's not being rude. No, uh, I've been known as Jenks for a little while, usually within family, though. Um, so at home, when my mom shouts Jenks, both my, me, my dad and my brother all come running. Uh, but yeah, since meeting you, Richard, you've now spread that further, further afield. <laughs> Everyone calls me Jenks. Um, so yeah, it's uh, well, partly because your wife's Claire. So it gets very confusing. There's too many Claire's in your life. And too many um, Claire's yeah, I'm actually. I'm actually Claire Harding, but Jenks is my uh, maiden name, and it's it's a little bit more fun. So yeah, you're not being rude. <laughs> I'm, I'm not being now. rude. Well, I will be rude as the show Claire. goes on. I will be rude as the show goes on, no <laughs> doubt. But I'm not being rude by saying that anyway. So let's let's jump straight in then. I can see we've got lots of people joining us on the live. Pascal, if I turn to you first of all, when I talk about content marketing, what would you say that should mean? to manage service providers, to IT solution providers? How is it relevant to them? So I think, you know, we can really play the game of splitting the two words, content and marketing, because in a way, what you've done is qualify the manner in which you want to promote yourself, be discovered, be, you know, uh, respected, and of course, in the end, secure the, um, you know, the customer of your ideal client. You know, you could say email marketing is a close cousin of that. What I like about content marketing, and the reason why I'm so pleased you chose this subject, is that I think to me, it's the one discipline within the big umbrella of marketing and sales 
that is truly almost a secret weapon of small teams and small organization, particularly in the industry which is knowledge-based, knowledge based, as is yours and that of our viewers and listeners today. And what we try and do, and I do say try because it's a journey of discovery for everyone that is starting content marketing, even you know well-established practitioners, is find a way to really showcase not just our competence when it comes to our chosen service and, and products, but also our approach to customer service, our communication skills, and of course, our common sense, which are actually qualities that your customers are going to value perhaps a lot more than whether or not you're competent and even though uh, whether or not you're very good on the keyboard and with the different gadgets that be, be become part of the content marketing family. Yeah. Now, for anybody with an eagle ear, they will be able to hear Pascal. Whilst you're based in the Northeast, that's not quite a Geordie accent that you're rocking there. So, when it comes to content marketing, obviously in your your homeland of uh, France, but you work with MSPs and IT businesses all across Europe and further afield. Con is content marketing a regionalized thing, or is it something that's a global phenomenon? So it's global, but what I will say in terms of the adoption curve, um, historically it began in the US, then because we are linked by a common language, although someone could dispute that, um, it came over to, to the UK and other speaking countries, and it slowly but surely has traveled, you know, kind of um, eastwards towards France, Germany, Italy, and, and so on. And it's going to be fascinating for me, um, as you mentioned, to compare and contrast different cultures, different languages, and how they've adopted it. But for me, it's kind of the maturation effect of bringing all the elements of social media, SEO, blogging, you know, all that stuff has been brought together into a much clearer and more practical strategy, which is why so many small businesses are really adopting it so swiftly. Yeah. Now, for the benefit of uh, people watching live and listening to this as the podcast afterwards, you know, I used to run a managed service provider business and I am long and old enough in the tooth to know content marketing and to have used content marketing my MSP before it was called content marketing. So I used to do blogging and things like that. And the reason I did it, uh, Jenks, as you know, is uh, because I wanted to, you know, journal my uh, journey in business and also I wanted to demonstrate my expertise. Now, Jenks, you work with uh, IT businesses who are experts in what they do. You also work with consultants, authors, speakers, that nature. So tell me more about how, you know, when they come to you and say, hey, we want to get out, we want to reach more people, why you suggest content marketing to them as a good fit? Oh, there's so, so many different reasons from, from where I come from as well. Um, so, yeah, they all come and they all come at various different parts of their journey as well. Some will have been doing it as you were doing it with us before it was even called content marketing um, without knowing. Um, but yeah, they'll come to me and um, it's, I just like the way that they've been able to get their knowledge out there. So they come with very different reasons as to why they want to do it. Some of them want to come as to become more of an authority in their field, to be able to share their content, um, to be able to get their content out even further um really so a lot of people come to me as well um maybe blogging but actually they can but i want to do more of this stuff how can i get it further like how can i get it more into my audience so we work with people to put those systems together and to then bring in the visuals as well so i'm from a design and branding background so they can use those uh visuals we're 85 percent of us are visual learners so whenever we're talking about content marketing, it's always good to look at the different different areas. Um, so yeah, we work from the blogging side through CSEO to the um, actual visual side as well. So um, there's lots of reasons why you would do it. And there's lots of reasons how you can do it as well and how you can implement that too. Well, let, let me put you on the spot. You work with technology companies. And Pascal, I'll come to you in a minute for a sort of a broader view. But Lots of people in the industry know you as the the systems lady. You put in place processes and workflows and things like that for content marketing to make it work properly. What's the number one thing you would say that MSPs shouldn't lose sight of with their content marketing efforts? Oh, it's the long game, I think. It's the, the biggest thing. Um, really, when they come, they come and they want to put all the stuff, like you say, I've become a little bit of a systems geek and a process geek through the design side. So I think everything can be a little bit systemized and being able to put those processes in place. It takes a little while to put those processes in place and get that um, 
kind of, I was going to say treadmill then, but that makes it sound like it's a chore. It's not. Um, but the long game and why, why you're actually doing it. It's not a case of just doing it for a week and going, oh, it doesn't work. It's, it's the longer game as to why why you're doing the yeah. content marketing. I would say don't lose sight of sight of that. Um, yeah. yeah, makes sense. And Pascal, you know, where has content marketing come from? On Upon reflection for you, why is it such an important part of sales and marketing strategies, especially for IT businesses where it's like super popular? I think for me, it's a convergence of two elements, two phenomenon really. One is the internet that has allowed your customers to more self-serve when it comes to the information. So if we can try, I remember times before the internet, the only information that customers could gather about you was the one that you chosen to produce, print, and give to them, from the business card to the to the brochure to maybe the exhibition stand if you went to trade shows and so on. And so we were really in control of the timing, particularly, and the format comes the internet when literally by the time somebody gets in touch with you that have formed 80% of their opinion about you by accessing the information at their leisure at a time in a format that suits them from mobile phones to laptops and more, we just need to essentially allow ourselves to be checked out, allow ourselves to be verified by customers and by uh, providing them with uh, access to this information in so many different formats, in so many different places. So that's, I think, the, the number one. And number two, it's almost as a result of the internet, and particularly the early decades, I'm thinking the 90s and 2000s, Richard, where our attempt as businesses to promote ourselves on the internet became so impersonal and so samey, as in people in an effort to get it right, copied each other, which means that they got it wrong. So our customers actually were left wanting more, and they also wanted to know about the people behind the business. And one element that content marketing does better than any other form of, of communication is for me as a customer to understand who you are, what motivates you, and more importantly, how you choose to look after me. And therefore, that, that's why it's just um, such a powerful discipline. I love that. Now, Jenks, I saw you nodding as we were talking um, uh, uh, along there, what Pascal was saying about making it personable. Um, I can see, you know, I know a number of the technology businesses, the MSPs that you work with, and I can see a certain design or a way that you help them put together their pages, especially their about pages, and show who the people are behind the scenes. We know why that's so important, but if you could speak down the camera now to anybody, any MSPs watching today, and say to them, hey, change your about page, about me page. How would you um, help them to put that into better terms? I'd say it exactly like that. <laughs> um, no, a lot of us. So the thing that I was nodding along, because that's the one thing that I tell a lot of people to do, is when they're putting all this effort into their marketing, whatever that looks like, is to actually put themselves front and centre and their team's front and centre. So when I jump onto a website, say, or I'm doing a brand audit for a company, quite often one of the things that will jump out to me first is stock photography um, right. and the, just the lack of people or the feeling, and that is where um, the branding side comes into. So with branding, it's not even just the visuals either. It's all that feeling and what people feel when they're, speaking to you and what they get back from you as well and um, so yeah, when I jump onto about pages and I see stock photos that goes to the top of my list as a red flag <laughs> to say this is the first thing you need to change on here um because you put people buy from people we all know that um so yeah you need to be able to get that um personality across and if you can do that across all it's not just your um about page or your website either that goes further into all of your marketing work what you're saying on social, who's behind the social and um, media platforms as well. There's more and more people doing video, so that's a great way of people getting on camera um, and they relate to people. So, yeah, just get the people out there. <laughs> show get them the off, show off your there. team. Down with stock yeah. photography. So <laughs> uh, you're not alone yeah. in thinking that way. We are live and interactive today, so please use the comments on whatever platform 
you're joining us with today uh, to give us your feedback, give us your questions for Jenks and Pascal. These two people are my go-to for content marketing advice, so please feel free to ask them any questions about content marketing, managed services, business growth, or anything else. I'll make sure to pause often and ask your questions. Shout out for uh, Paul Lintz from Like Mind Marketing who's watching. Um, uh, we were Jenks last year, was we, sorry, earlier. Now, where are we? We're in 2022. Yeah. Last year, we were at uh, Marketed Live in Nottingham that Paul runs. <laughs> Fantastic business to be around like-minded people. So, uh, hi, Paul. Good to have you uh, join us today. Um, Pascal, let me turn to you and ask uh, a question. And specifically, you know, I've been a raving fan of your work for for a long time now. And I'd encourage anybody uh, who's uh, com not come across your work before, go and seek out Pascal's work. And we'll give you all the details later on and include them in the show notes as well for this. But in previous conversations, you've used the term content marketing campaign and content series versus content specials. Another one you've used is repurposing up. So there's three phrases that you use there. Can you give us a quick overview of what those three phrases mean to you? Oh, absolutely. Uh, can I just say that I'm immensely flattered that uh, not that you listen to me, that you remember our conversations as well. <laughs> you know, it's lovely. So let me begin with the uh, content marketing campaign. So actually it's playing back to what Claire mentioned, which is it's a, it's a long-term game. It's something that you want to um, almost uh, execute and deploy all, over several months. But actually, what I'm trying to do here when I uh, explain to, to my customers what the, the job entails really it's all about taking the customer on the journey of learning and appreciation of what makes you special and why they should choose you and not the others. And we try and split this campaign, therefore, of building your online image, building your online reputation, by extension, getting inquiries and sales over three stages. So the campaign, because there are three elements to this that takes time. So very, very briefly, for viewers and listeners, stage one is called visibility. The second stage is called credibility, and the third stage is called interactivity. And this is really a model, a, um, a blueprint to help you break down what the campaign elements are. So number one, visibility, it's all about being discovered because the content that you are creating will be in published by others and or you will be a guest on someone else's blog or someone else's video or podcast and that's really quite important you know that visibility element needs to have you work in collaboration with others who currently have the attention and trust i would argue of your uh, audience chosen audience and you find a way to become visible via their own marketing effort the reason why I need to clarify that is because majority of the time when I work with clients and, and I start you know, discussing what they do, what I hear, Richard, is that they've been really you know, busy creating information, but publishing it on their website, publishing it on their social networks, publishing it on whatever you know, other channels they control, hoping for things to happen. The thing is, we are now in 2022, we're no longer in 2000s or 2010s, where this may have been, I suppose, a, 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 a valuable, valuable uh, strategy to be discovered at the time where people are you know, d in so much demand in terms of content consumption. You've got to be working with others. So visibility is preparing and working with people like Claire and many others, preparing you to be a guest contributor to someone else's platform. Then we can move on to credibility. This is the one that people know by heart, which is this idea of nurturing and making sure that your destinations, whether it's your website, your LinkedIn profile and so on, are really there to support your reputation. And not just in terms of, once again, the competency, but also your approach to customer service in particular. And then interactivity, the final stage, I think this one, we thought we had a bit longer, all of us content marketers, before we had to tell you, but we had the small matter of the pandemic um, that accelerated this adoption of being available for further questioning and for further clarification by our webinars, via um, open days now, as you're going to come back, or any form of kind of, um, I am interested, but still is some clarification, and I want to talk to the people in the business where, where possible. So that's what we mean by campaign. There are three stages, they each have a different job, and they require something a bit different from you. 
Yeah, that makes absolute sense. One, to pick up on something you've said, um, uh, just about making yourself available uh, uh, to others as well. And of course, we're, w- there's an argument we're all available way too much online. But there's a difference, isn't there, between letting people know, hey, I'm available to uh, speak to you. And one of the, the ways that I tell MSPs is get in touch with you know your local business chamber, get in touch with your local business networking groups and say, hey, I'm here and I'm an expert. I'm available to answer uh, any queries that you have. Because Sometimes it's, you know, you have to give that explicit permission. Otherwise, people just won't reach out and have that conversation with you. Absolutely. So, and that leads on to the content series versus content specials. So, if we take back this idea of visibility, credibility, and interactivity, let's say you're an MSP and you want to be uh, known to maybe the education sector, that could be in a part of, of your campaign. So, your job is to work with those who are already in communication with the education sector. That would be your visibility. And you make yourself available as a guest. Then you've got your credibility where the content series and or specials will be made available. And then after that, you're going to say to people, if you've enjoyed this content, if you've enjoyed the series or special, I will expand on this soon. Here's the date and here's the venue, whether it's in person or or, or virtual, and that would be your, your interactivity. But the threat through is you're tackling the same issue or challenge. So let's say it's um, ed- education sector and it's cybersecurity. And for the foreseeable future, you're going to be seen and heard being helpful about that very topic through series and specials. So series would suggest that maybe you're going to write about cybersecurity, but you're going to go deep and you're going to be exploring the challenge of, let's say, running an education establishment and cybersecurity, and you're going to do not just a one-off, which is what people tend to do to try and game the SEO and all that other, all that stuff. You're going to be seen and heard being helpful as part of your approach to customer service by doing a one of six articles. And mm. um, by the end, you'll be able to um, have seen, have explored everything. So that could be one way to go about it. Or as a special, you could create a free guide where people can, which people can download, which would be the ultimate checklist about where are we right now when it comes to cybersecurity, what are the gaps, and what could I do about it? With a view, of course, of those um, you know kind of website visitors thinking of you first, as you know, as as the consultant. Either way, there's still the invitation for the the webinar to kind of wrap it up. And then the third, I think you said the third one was repurposing. Up. Yeah, I was going to give a, an example of that, Pascal, if I can, because this is an idea. And, you know, for the benefit of people uh, watching this live or listening to the replay on the podcast, when I say these are my go-to people, they genuinely are. I listen to what these two say. They are world-class experts at what they do. And one of the, you know, I put, our business puts out an awful lot of content. But one of the big ideas that I picked up from uh, both of you is the idea of content upgrades or repurposing, as I've heard some people uh, talk about it. So this show is going out live. Uh, it will be repurposed into a blog post. It will be syndicated across different sites, and then it will also be repurposed as a podcast. So um, audio listeners can can get this out through the podcast every uh, Sunday evening as well. But tell us more about how MSPs can repurpose and upgrade content. So the, the repurposing up or the upgrade is really born out of this need to be uh, kind to yourself as an MSP owner and a content marketer, but also actually to give reasons for people to also share and praise you. So let's say we've done a, um, a series around cybersecurity for uh, education, and I, I do want to uh, you know, hint to the fight of special, you know, specializing in a particular audience and a particular challenge each time. So you've got those six articles. You may even have gone ahead with a guide. You may even gone ahead with webinars and so on. So if you step back, all those content pieces are really quite something individually. But if you were to repurpose up and create a book with everything that comes with it, and this book to be made available either free of charge or through Amazon and so on, that's going to play a big part in building your reputation. Um, you yourself you know, did um, a great series about women in tech as part of um, a Tub Talk, and all those interviews transcribed and converted into literally a hardback cover book for people to to purchase and support some of the initiative is what you need to do. And I think the repurposing up needs to be part of your strategy because all too often what people do is they create one bit of content, 
take a breather, and then go to the next one, and breathe again, think of the next one. And if you're not careful, two things will have happened. You'll miss some of the linking of those or, or that content, and you will also miss chances to forever impress people because you are very vigilant about you know your content creation, but the content abundance as well. And back to your point by repurposing different format, you're also very vigilant about preferences, readers, viewers, uh, and listeners. You know we all very very, very different. And, and the best way to to get that organised, of course, is to work with someone like Claire. So I think that with, with content marketing, with the apps and everything that has come along, people feel very well resourced and almost feel they could work independently. But you, sh you should also apply quite a bit of self-awareness and go where your limits might be. And then this is where as part of a team project, someone like Claire, many others can get involved. Yeah, totally agree. Love that approach. We are live and interactive today. So whether you're joining us, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, any other platforms, is Bebo still a thing? I'm not so sure. Uh, do let us know in the comments. Uh, let us know your feedback and any questions you've got for Pascal or Claire Jenks today. Jenks, Pascal has got his raving fans out there, but you have certainly got yours as well. Uh, let's have a look. We've got Mark Copeman on YouTube says plus one on the stock images point Jenks made earlier. So Mark, uh, the author of the wonderful book, Help Desk Habits, and does website reviews himself. I'd encourage MSPs to go and check out Mark's work as well. But yes, down with stock uh, uh, images there. We don't need to be using it anymore. And we've also got a question for you here, Jenks, uh, from Robert Gibbons as well. Uh, on Facebook, Rob asks, when you have got content material and you're repurposing the material, how far back should you go before you archive material that's too old? So what's the what's the shelf life of uh, content that you point out there? Oh, well, there's, there's lots of different types of content. So um, you, you want to be, if you're creating content, the best way is to look at ever, creating evergreen content. So that's stuff that is, has got no time limit on it. That's the stuff that you can, can repose, repurpose and keep keep posting and keep sharing there um as soon as you've got I've, <laughs> I've actually just been archiving some um content today that's all about um where do we see things going in 2021 so we're talking about an, a particular year so if you're starting to post that it's great if you look you could do a, a look back post and say this is what we thought was going to happen in 2021 so you've got to change it a little bit but if you're posting that out there some people are going to be like, hold on a second. <laughs> it's 2022 yeah. already. Um, so anything that's got dates in it, I'd say that has a time limit on it for how you're going to re repost it, say. But let's like say you could do look back posts. There's different ways as long as you're keeping um, kind of your ideas as well. Keep looking at it and go, actually, could, could it be flipped on its head and how could we repurpose that? Um, but the evergreen stuff that doesn't have um, dates attached to it um, and the general um, educational stuff that you're sharing with your clients, most of it will be stuff that can be repurposed and reshared going forward. Um, obviously, if it's a, a new piece of news and it's two months, um, that, that's when you'll stop that. But um, yeah, Pascal can come up with all sorts of ideas for ways of keeping content on its head as well, I'm sure. <laughs> no, I think that's, that's um, you know, a, a fair comment that you say. So uh, this is a bone of contention in the blogging industry. But for instance, we took the, the dates off our blog posts quite some time ago because it's human nature, isn't it? Some people will come to one of my blog posts and go, oh, that was written in 2010. It's no longer relevant. Of course it is because some of the content is absolutely timeless. And then others, uh, Rob, for instance, if you're writing about, you know, Microsoft's new commerce experience, well, it's news that's got a finite life on it. So um, uh, uh, that's certainly my view. It matches up with Jenks. But content is a little bit like the fourth bridge. You've got to keep repainting it and, you know, revarnishing it over and over again. Cut it away, I think, if it's um, if it uh, needs archiving, if it's dated. But you can keep using the content again and again and again, can't you? Pascal, I want to speak to you about a specific type of content now. You've been coaching business owners um, for a long time about video marketing. Um, uh, recently, I've noticed that you've changed your approach a little bit towards video marketing. <laughs> tell, us, tell us a little bit more about where those changes came from. So, yeah, if I go back to you know how I used to teach video marketing, was actually to break it down and start with the simplest format possible 
and almost work your way towards what I deem to be the most complex format, which is actually live video, as we as we are doing today. And actually, one would learn as much from the trainees that you know, and vice versa. And what I've realized is that I reversed it now and I ask people to start with live video. And there's two two reasons behind that. Is with live video, it removes so many of the complication of what I'm going to call pre-recorded content of you know the editing and the, the there's still the planning but there's many elements that come with pre-recorded content but someone will say to me i've tried 20 times to do a welcome video for my website and i've given up because it doesn't sound right i don't look right you know all the all the, the excuses that, that you can you can imagine was if they were to be invited on the live session to do a welcome statement they would do it it would get done it would get published it would get repurposed and we can move on to the, to the next thing and so to me, there's been something really quite fascinating to observe in terms of the behavior, but also the adoption of live video to get things done, whether it's a 10 minute video, whether it's an hour conversation and so on. And, and what is lovely is that, you know, you can still uh, apply the same planning, you can still apply the same kind of segmentation, the same branding, everything that you would do for a pre-recorded content, but it's done so much faster. So as a result of which, you, the content creator, feel much better with this business of video marketing. And of course, you are already creating value for your community. So I've gone the other way, which is start with live and almost work your way back towards the simpler pre-recorded content that will still give you a bit of anxieties and, and you find reasons to delete and, and um, give, it, give up somehow. Makes absolute sense. And I should say, uh, your co-host on Two Marketing Geeks in a Podcast is uh, says hello. Um, so Roger Redwoods oh, is uh, joining us as well. So uh, there you go, um, uh, Roger, on anybody in the MSP industry. I'd encourage you, if you're into marketing or movies, science fiction, uh, all of that geeky sort of stuff, go and check out their podcast because it really is a, uh, a good one. We are live here today. So if you've got any comments or feedback for our guests today, please let us know, We're monitoring all of the channels. Uh, and we've got a question come in here, Jenks, and perhaps I'll, I'll point this at you. So Theo Nell on YouTube asks, uh, how do you prevent yourself becoming overwhelmed with all of the material and all of the upgrade uh, creation that is possible? How can you? How do you stop yourself from getting overwhelmed with all of this stuff that you could do? Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities, and actually, I've just been working with a client as well on this exact <laughs> problem because they're super enthusiastic and they want to do everything, <laughs> and there is so much they can do. And we said. Let's step back for a second. Let's look at what we want to do and what's possible with your day-to-day -day activities because they've worked out that they've also got a business to run and have a life and <laughs> breathe and eat. And then they've got the marketing to do as well. So we've said, let's so we brainstormed everything that was possible. And then we said, hold on, let's look at what's going to be most impactful and what's going to actually be possible so that once you start, you're not going to start getting overwhelmed. If you start getting um, more time, for example, or you start bringing on a team to help you with that stuff, you can start to do more. But that tends to be where people have this overwhelm side is when they're actually doing it themselves and they're just they get all excited and they want to do everything. So we've now put a little bit of a process in place. So turn into a bit of a process geek but so we've got a little process in place and saying when we create this one type of content this is what we're going to do and that's it once that's done we rinse and repeat that and we we continue with that format then when we've got that working well and we've got into a bit of a, a rhythm we can look right what else can we do now and what what are the other possibilities but yeah you've got to start at what's possible with your time to start with especially if you are doing it yourself and you're not outsourcing um that's that's the first the <laughs> first step i'd say um yeah. for doing it it's if, it, can, it can take a lot of time to do Absolutely brilliant advice because, you know, for all of us as MSP owners, we've got this little thing of running an IT business as well as doing all of this uh, content marketing as well. But let me ask, so you've just given Theo some great advice on how not to get overwhelmed with all the potential for content marketing and there's a vast amount of potential. I know there's going to be some people watching today who are saying, yeah, this all sounds great, 
But the flip side of the coin for them is they think they haven't got any ideas or the things that they're going to talk about is too boring uh, or, you know, people won't want to hear about it. What advice, is there any tips that you can give that you you give to your clients on how to come up with ideas for the type of content that you can create? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, again, this is another issue. So you're covering all the issues that I tend to deal with on a day-to-day basis. Um, So there's lots of different places. I think one of the things people think is like you say it's it's boring no one wants to know this I've got nothing to share or they already know all that stuff the chances are they don't or they don't know that you know it which is one of the other ways as well your this is an opportunity for you to you to share your knowledge um so don't assume that they know it so you don't do it to start with um but coming up with content ideas there's so many different um, places and one of the places that I suggest especially for the MSPs to go to is um, their service desks and their clients and what are they saying what questions are they asking what issues are they coming up with what questions have they got around um, certain products and answer them as a starting point you've got you've, you've got your team potentially who are pulling all of this information together Take a second to just look at it and go, actually, is there a commonality here that actually we could solve with a piece of content marketing? There was um, actually, um, it was a guy at one of the Tech Tribe meetups in Manchester who was doing exactly that. He was recording videos on how to fix things and um, working, working through tutorials and things, which actually helped their team as well as being content yeah. marketing for the users as well so it's got twofold to it um so that's the place i always go uh suggest first to go to um and keep an eye on what's on what's going on um and pascal's i know is a big um fan of theming content so we've been working with a client we said right what are we gonna talk about this month and their focus was all around passwords manager because they were bringing on a new password manager so they were thinking let's create content around that it gave them a focus so it removes that overwhelm but also gives you that kickstart as well so they'd be the two the two tips i'd say to to look out for um, yeah I love that feedback, especially the idea of themes, because there's so much you can talk about. Uh, for anybody who's watching this today who runs a managed service provider business or an IT solution provider and thinks, we've got nothing at all to talk about in content marketing, the one tip that I would give you, speaking to somebody who's been there and, and done that to a degree, is you have got the world's biggest frequently asked questions database right in front of you, and it's called your help desk or your professional services automation tool. So if you're wondering the type of content that people might consume, go and have a look at what your clients are asking your help desk for help on, and then write or create, I say write, I'm a, I'm a writer, create content, whether it's video, audio, images, infographics, whatever it might be, create the content around those questions. I think you know that can work uh, really, really well. Uh, let us know in the comments on whatever platform you run, if you are using content marketing right now and if you're not what's holding you back from getting started with content marketing i'm really intrigued um pascal we've got some more feedback here comments uh from mark hopeman uh, author of help desk habits who's watching today uh, on youtube he says pascal real live video no question the more you do it the better you become. Practice makes progress, as my uh, children will tell me, He said, uh, Mark says. Uh, Pascal, on the subject of video, I've heard you say that you should treat your content marketing efforts, not just your video, I guess, but all content marketing, like a Hollywood blockbuster. Now, I know you're a big movie <laughs> geek, the same as uh, mm-hmm. me, you love movies and things, but what did you mean when you said treating your content like a Hollywood blo- blockbuster? A lot of the work that um, I suppose I do, Claire, and, and you do is about mindset. And it's about, you know, we build confidence, we bring clarity, and we have people feel just very competent about what we do. And so it's, it's coming out of a module from one of my training sessions where for fun, but also actually because it has merit, I ask people, you all know about movies, you've all been or perhaps, you know, more recently been watching via streaming platforms. What is a typical marketing pack? You know, how do they typically market a movie? Because when people make a film, which is um, you know, very, very difficult, they don't 
worry whether or not people are going to like it until it's been published. And I think for many of our viewers and listeners today, many of my customers, before they even start to write a single word uh, on that blog, before they even start to storyboard you know, the single frame on the video, they already worry that it won't be good enough or that people will not like it as much. And I said, you've got to put that to one side and assume that it's going to go well because actually the likelihood is it will. And in addition to preparing the content, you need to prepare the promo pack. And typically, all of you can can you know play the game. We're going to have a teaser poster. That would be a graphic for social media. There will be a short trailer. If this is a six part series, you know, just get me excited about it. Or if it's a special and so on, there's going to be some feedback from you know those who've had the chance to maybe have a preview. The, your, your VIP customers. There's going to be obviously behind the scenes. There's going to be you know director's commentaries. There's going to be all things that you know you can think for yourself because you'll be on the receiving end of the marketing campaign. Some of the social media posts from um, you know like movies are so inspiring from a style and format point of view. So in addition to planning the content creation, you've got to also plan the content promotion. And here's the thing, when you put together your marketing pack for the future content, you feel amazing, you believe in yourself, you believe it's going to work, and so will your audience. It's so true. I saw... <laughs> I'm a mark for my own stuff here. I saw our trailer go out about today's session and I got super excited about it. I was like, this is brilliant. I get to to speak to these guys later on, but I, I love the idea of that. And let me put you on the spot, Pascal. Nothing at all to do with IT. Favourite movie of all time. What would you go with? Oh, you should know the answer. Jaws. Love that movie. <laughs> Let's get back onto content marketing before we get too carried away with the uh, the movie film. Jenks, so I've got a question come in here. I, I think it's a really good one. Dennis Wilson on YouTube asks, what are the few types of content that seem to be working the best in the MSP industry right now? So what what's working best for MSPs in terms of content? Oh, I'm, I'm going to give a politician answer. <laughs> um, Whatever content you can be consistent with <laughs> is the one I would put out there. Yeah. So that's a bit of a politician's answer there. Um, so it might not be what you want to hear. But yeah, whatever you can be consistent with. So pe I'm seeing clients do all sorts of different things. Um, but the ones that work are the ones that they're consistent with. There's a few that prefer writing, so they go to write blogs. There's other ones that have got comfortable in camera, so they're happy to go onto camera. Um, so that's the format, I suppose. It's whatever feels comfortable to you to at least get started and you can be consistent with. Um, yeah. That's what brings the, the, kind of the value at the end of it. Um, and in terms of types, the, in terms of the actual content, all the educational stuff that brings value to the person that you're writing or speaking to, um, depending on who you are speaking to and what their um, pain points are and what they need to know from you. So. So, yeah, so I, I, I love I love that about. answer. It's not a politician's answer at all, Jones. You know, twenty years ago, I started off writing because I, you know, uh, in fact, uh, uh, all the way through this conversation, I've been saying, "Oh, you should write this and write that." It's a slip of the tongue, of course. Any type of content that you put out, whatever works best for you. But the likes we've got Pete Matheson, who um, uh, does uh, incredible videos. Tom Lawrence with his video channel as well. I know other MSPs have put out podcasts. Um, so yeah, there's a, a variety of different ways and I could, couldn't agree more with what uh, Jenks has said there, Dennis, it's no use if you're a, a writer and not a video guy, you know, concentrate on the writing because you'll carve out your niche there and get known for that rather than trying to force yourself. With that said, Pascal, let me turn to you. We've talked about the, you know, the whole variety of different things that we can do. And I'm asking you specifically because, um, you know, you work with people like Jenks to help you with your content and others. Um, what's mm -hmm. the best way for somebody to focus on what they do best and realize, okay, I can work, I can build this team, virtual assistants or whatever, to, to help me do other types of content? So, so I think it's back to self-awareness. And, and it is at two levels. Claire mentioned a moment ago about time. And I work with my clients to actually almost rediscover their time budget when it comes to the content marketing element. Uh, a couple of forces, you know, people said I don't have enough time, people are not, are not sure how much time to give. 
And I said to them, it's the other way around. It's actually, you make your marketing campaign fit the time budget you've got, as opposed to wishing for more time and this and the other. And then what you do then working with the likes of Claire and virtual teams is you get either more value for from that time budget or you extend the, the, the time budget. So number one, self-awareness about time available to you. And, and very often you and I, Richard, will be working on reclaiming time where there may be some, maybe some efficiencies in the business and stuff like that. And then the second, which is what Claire just mentioned, which is, you know, your preferred form and your kind of uh, yet to be discovered talent as a content creator. And I always say to people, you know, I want you to imagine a moment that it's Friday, it's late, you're cold, you're hungry, and yet you have to go ahead and create content. And the thought of creating content that matches your tone of voice and your format makes you smile, even though you're tired, hungry, and cold. And again, it's a mindset thing, but it, it really, really works. And, and I think for me is don't also be embarrassed to lean onto your passion within obviously being an MSP and being of service to, to your customers. And if there's a subject that really uh, is of interest to you, you could be even be curious about it. You don't, don't have to know everything. You could be seen to be the ultimate investigator and explore that over the course of, of a series. Or there's something that people ask you all of the time. You take great pleasure in explaining it, but it's almost what a shame if only others had heard me explaining that, or if only others uh, had the chance to study what I've just said. Let me record a video or let me craft a, a, a book. So once again, it's also where's the spark coming from? And for me, there's no secret, and I do believe that's been the case for centuries, the spark of the content tidy comes from the last conversation you've had where you felt good and the other person felt good too. Love that answer. Pascal, we've got a follow-up question here from uh, Jeff Bolden from Boltech on uh, Boltech Solutions on LinkedIn. He says, Pascal, I always feel as though there are 20 videos out there that talk about the issue better than I might. <laughs> now, this is a common one, isn't it? So MSP is looking and saying, oh, yeah, but other people have already talked about that or they've done it better than me. What answer would you give to Jeff on uh, why he should produce the content? Can I just give two answers in one? Yeah. I can have two for one. So the first one is what matters, Jeff, is that you are not giving the answer. It doesn't matter that the others are. What matters to your existing customers, who are going to be your biggest champions by sharing it on, but also your future customers, what matters is that you are not given the answer. Secondly, unless you've been cloned and you're a carbon copy of the others, your answer will be different. It'll sound different. It'll, uh, it will hear it differently. The execution graphically by working you know, with people like Claire and many others will, will be different. And therefore, you can just be, again, confident and treat it like a Hollywood blockbuster. It's already already an Oscar-winning production that you're, it's on its way. And I mean this in, a, in jest, but it's true. It's already something that people are going to enjoy consuming, whether they're going to read, write, uh, or, or listen. And the, the, the last thing I would say is be comfortable with the feelings because we all have those feelings even those who seemingly will produce something that you're going to deem to be better than yours i can assure you that the journey to press that uh, publish button was one full of anguish and anxieties about actually uh, are others doing it. and i could share with you links to uh, you know award-winning directors and content creators who we assume you know rightly so that they are the best and they are at the top of their their career who are still uh, nervous about you know going ahead with the, the next book or, or the next kind of um, movie. So I think it's also uh, self awareness. It's only normal. Why? Because you care and you want to get it right. But here's the thing: if you have the the right audience in mind, if he comes with good intention, just to be seen and heard, being helpful, it will work. Absolutely. We are live. We are coming near the end of our time together. So if you've got a burning question for Pascal Fintoni or Claire Jenks, put it in the comments now, but we'll make sure uh, to answer them. We have got Jenks and Pascal, the great and the good in the MSP industry have come out to watch and hear, listen to what you're saying today. So Jim Stackhouse on LinkedIn says, uh, when it comes to um, uh, deciding on what type of content to create, Jim comes up with a very good idea. He's like, ask your non-technical friends 
what they find interesting, which I think is a really good uh, piece of advice there. And Jim knows a thing or two about marketing, so I definitely listen there. And talking of legends of the marketing industry, uh, Andrew Moon of Orange Nomad on YouTube that does just incredible work with uh, for, to help MSPs with their LinkedIn uh, presence. Um, Andrew uh, uh, says, it's the same with exercising. What exercise works best to lose weight, whichever, the, whichever is the one you'll actually do. So that was in answer to Dennis's question <laughs> earlier on good. about what type of content. Yeah, sorry, Pascal, go ahead. Do you agree with Andrew there? <laughs> Yeah, very much so. And I was just remembering, um, reflecting what Claire said a moment ago about a bit of a system I've got as well for my customers about content ideas. I mean, we've already mentioned quite a few, but it's all this this idea of making your ordinary, someone else's extraordinary. And you can't underestimate, you know, what uh, customers find fascinating and almost uh, really intriguing, even though to you it's pretty mundane and and day to day. So of, don't I wouldn't use therefore your own uh, kind of barometer as to whether or not it's interesting as the measure to go ahead or not. I think you find that your customers will find every aspect of your business interesting, and your role therefore is to kind of again be this idea of. Actions and reactions. So what have we been up to recently, such as answering questions that others should know about? That's the actions, let's say, of the week of the month. A reaction is what news or updates have we heard to which we may have reacted, even though it's maybe it was like an inner monologue. And once again, what a shame that others were not here to listen to my reaction. So you can also publish or, or record a reaction to a news, to an article or to an event. Yeah. Can I just sense. add to that as well? I'm just, well, I'm just thinking yeah. of an um, example now. So on LinkedIn, I follow a lot of um, MSPs. I work with them. So there's a lot of connections on there. And um, whenever there's um, a new, uh, it tends to be a bad thing that I tend to look out for more than off, offer than not. Um, so something's been hacked or there's a patch that's needed. There was one for Adobe recently. So there's lots of people saying the same message out there. It's one social media post, but only one really drew me in. And that was because it was speaking to me in the way that I consume the content, even though everybody was saying the same thing. So I think it doesn't matter so much if you think, oh, other people have said that. So people, I didn't notice the others until then I spotted that one that spoke to me. And then I was like, oh yeah, there is people talking about this now. So I think it's worthwhile if people are doing, saying the same thing, you'll say it in a different way or you'll present it in a different way. And yeah, so that's just yeah. one, one example because that MSP in mm. particular um, works with creatives. So it had the words talking to me as a creative, um, whereas the other ones were wording it in a way that targets their audience. So same kind of issue, worded in a different way. Um, yeah, just wanted to share that, share that example with you while I thought of it. That's brilliant, Jenks. Yeah, absolutely uh, uh, makes sense. So for anybody who's like, oh, I, I'm not going to say this because everybody's already said it before and better. No, because there's your clients listen to you and there's potential clients out there who will only listen to you and ignore what other people say. So absolutely couldn't agree more, Jenks. Now, Obviously, Claire, you work with you know lots of MSPs. You've talked about that, and we've talked a little bit about virtual assistants and that type of uh, thing. But many people on the call today, listening in or watching live, they're going to be starting out creating content in-house on their own. So are there any tools or resources you can recommend to MSPs to help them get started on their content marketing journey? Yeah, definitely. First off, you just called me Claire, which is really weird. <laughs> no, I found it a little bit awkward as well. The only time I've had, the only time I've ever called you Claire is when there's something. It's like, Claire. We need to get this fixed. <laughs> it's like scolding, isn't it? Just threw me off then. <laughs> Tools and resources. Jenks. Jenks, are there any resources that you'd recommend to MSPs getting started? Yeah, definitely. This is so many different, depending on where you're going and what you're planning on doing so first of all have your plan um there's if you're gonna do it in-house first of all I'd have that plan and work out right what is it that I'm going to talk about what is it that I can what time have I got and and start there there's books out there I've, I've got the one that everybody knows about answering questions in front of me um, and there's also 
they ask you answer, which is a brilliant book. So even if you just want to start getting your head around um, answering those questions, um, as I mentioned before, where you can get content from, start having a look around and reading reading the books. There's another one, um, Content Fortress by uh, Jammy Digital, which is a great one just to be able to put that mindset, I think, that um, Pas- Pascal's talking about to start getting an idea. Then you get into the actual tools and there's loads of them, depending on what format you're going to go with. So I could literally list millions of them off from creating graphics, Canva is my go-to, uh, social media schedulers, there's a millions of them, Agora Pulse is my go-to, uh, video creation software, There's depending on what your level is, there's loads of them. Um, we actually used InVideo to create your trailer today. Um, so there's, which is all, all templates. So there's, there's little tips and tricks out there that you don't have to actually spend lots of time doing it if you know. But yeah, have, yeah. have a look around. And have you not got a blog on resources for content marketing, Richard? Oh, well, it's good. If you have it's, it, it's you almost can get <laughs> yeah, we have got a blog. <laughs> we'll put that in the show notes. And for anybody watching live and frantically scribbling down all, all the things that Jenks mentioned there or listening to this while they're out walking, we will include a show notes with all of the resources, all of the books, all of the tools, all of the blog posts, all the videos, articles, everything else that Pascal and Jenks have mentioned today. Uh, Gareth Westwood on YouTube says, Jenks, I end up recording loads of video, but never actually editing or uploading most of it. Do I just need to stop procrastinating and get on with it? Or I'm guessing, should he should he be working with a with a video editor to get the work done? I would say that's either stop procrastinating and get on with it. But I also know, Gareth, that you're a very busy man. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've got an IT business to run. Um, so yeah, have a look at VAs and see. There's not actually there's, there's places you can go to find help find a team that aren't going to cost you thousands and thousands of pounds. It might be worth working out a process with you. It might be worth, like, I, I go in and help um, businesses set up that process and then I can leave and, and leave you and your team to get on with it. It's having that process in place. Um, but you've got video editors out there. You've got people that will help the upload side. So if you actually want to do the editing I'm not saying you should be doing it but if you're doing the editing you can actually hand that off then to a VA who can upload it to YouTube for you optimize it and then promote it that's what we do for a lot of our clients as well so there's, there's different levels of outsourcing that so if you want to start a little bit and work backwards and um, that you'll definitely get it done because now you're accountable to someone and now you're paying someone to get it done and they will come and ask you where's the video uh, we need to get it uploaded. <laughs> so, An answer yeah, could is a great well. way to overcome procrastination there. So, yeah, sorry, Pascal, you're about to say. I was going to say, um, just to add on that, you know, you, you've got two things self awareness. Are those videos still you know, on your computer because you've been nervous that they're not good enough? Or is it because you've not had the time to do the editing? Both business cases to get somebody else to do it for you because you know what i find you'd be quite amazed when you get the results back you'd be thinking oh my goodness this is brilliant because you've had uh, time to, to detach yourself and then the, the other thing is um for me for, for you know go live and then give the video to the editor so you get double the uh, the impact you have the live audience and then you have the, the replay as well Oh, that's gold. We have got so much wonderful feedback for both of you, Jenks, Pascal, in the comments. I'd encourage you, go on LinkedIn and YouTube and Facebook afterwards and see all the wonderful things people are saying to you. So I hope everybody will join me in saying thank you to Jenks and Pascal for joining us here today. We've got a lot of people saying, how can I get in touch with you? So Pascal, first of all, where can people find you online? How can they reach out to you? So with a name like mine, I can't hide so well on the internet. So if you just Google Pascal Fintoni, uh, you'll find the website. Uh, I tend to be very active on, on LinkedIn and, and Twitter. It's just the, the two platforms that you can leave me private messages. And uh, certainly if you know, you, you're know looking for ways to really re- re- reframe the mindset and, and just find you know what is going to be your way of approaching content marketing this year, just feel free to um, go onto the video blog where I've had the pleasure of interviewing many people, such as Richard and Claire, on how to make sure that this is the year 
where you're going to press that publish button. Wonderful. Jenks, how can people find you online? Oh, I search for Jenks, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I am Claire Jenks online. Um, yep, so Claire Jenks, you'll find my website and I am C Jenks Design on uh, Instagram if you want to look at the pretty pictures of the beach um, or LinkedIn for day to day business stuff. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you both. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for joining uh, today. All that remains me to saying is that's all the time we've got for on Tub Talk Live today. I want to give a big shout out to our partners the team at Fresh Productions who made this episode possible. If you're a technology business looking to host a live stream or in-person event, then Ben and the team at Fresh Productions are the expert that make your event great. I can tell you for a fact, I rock up to this event, I talk to the camera and Richard, who's behind the scenes, the other Richard, and Ben and everybody just make all of this work. And that's a great example of content marketing, doing what you're good at and asking other people to do what they're good at as well. So thank you to the team at Fresh Productions. Thanks again to our guests, Claire Jenks and Pascal Fintoni for being with us today. And for you for joining us at uh, home today. Really appreciate it. We will look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Tub Talk, the podcast for IT consultants. Goodbye for now. Hey folks, Richard here. Thanks for listening today. I know you've got a ton of options for who you listen to nowadays, so I really appreciate your support. Do you have any feedback on this episode? Ideas for future guests? Tweet me at Tublog using the hashtag TubTalk. I respond to every tweet and really appreciate your feedback. Hey team, this is Richard again. Just one more thing before you take off, and that is MSP Insights. Now, every Tuesday, I share my thoughts on the business of IT with you, the managed service community. Thousands of managed service providers already subscribe to MSP Insights. It's easy to sign up, easy to cancel. MSP Insights is basically a short email from me every Tuesday without fail with advice on growing your IT business, plus cool resources I found, discovered, or started exploring that week. It's kind of like my diary of cool things and often includes articles or books I've read, tools I've discovered and events I think you'd be interested in, often sent to me by my friends and Tub Talk podcast guests. So if that sounds fun, a short tiny bite of MSP goodness every Tuesday and you'd like to try it out, just go to go.tub.co forward slash Tuesday. That's go.tub.co forward slash Tuesday. Drop in your email and you'll get the very next one. Thanks for listening.